This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another episode of the ODAP Chat Podcast. In case you're new here, my name is Arlena and I'll be your host. Today is another step work call and this one is with Rosalind who is sharing her step three homework from A Women's Way Through the 12 Steps by Dr. Stephanie Covington. And if you didn't hear already, actually Dr. Stephanie Covington is going to be on the podcast next month. So excited! Um, so let's see, as an aside, uh, I know I've had a lot of step work calls lately, but just so you know, I will have more interviews with people who have recovered from alcoholism and addiction. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to access interviews from prior guests, just visit odatchat.com. But before we jump in, I'm really excited to announce that I have a new workshop called Sobriety Reset, which is to complete the 12 steps in six weeks in a group setting. And it's free. It's free for now, (laughs) I should say. So don't wait. Registration will be limited. Um, So go sign up now before the class is full. It's starting soon. So just sign up and check back for dates. So today's guest is Rosalind, who has had, you know, lots of struggles over a long period of time, but she never gives up. And I'm so grateful for her willingness and courage and her desire to help others. So with that, please enjoy this episode with Rosalind. All right. Well, Rosalind, thank you so much for joining me on another episode. Yay. Hi, Erlina. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. Good. I'm so excited. So you're on step three. Yes. Step three. Oh, this is such a good one. Yeah. Um, been working on it for a little while, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, everything happens in God's timing, right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we jump in, I'll just say a little prayer. Uh, I'm speaking of God. We'll just invite him in to the uh, process. So take a little cleansing breath. Uh, dear Father, thank you so much for this time with Rosalind. I'm so grateful that she is willing to work steps and go through the process. I just invite you in to this time with her that uh, you guide our minds and our hearts, that we might um, see whatever it is that you would have us learn today. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Yay. Okay. So you're on step three and which is made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. And I love how this, um, step has quotes around it. Um, the part where it says, uh, as we understand him, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, myself had all kinds of ideas about God that were mostly given to me. So this was the first, and I was so resistant to God when I first got sober. Um, so this was really interesting the way, the way they were like, Hey, how about you redefine what God means to you? I was like, well, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have a similar, I was the same. yeah, I was the same way. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause be, I was brought up with like a Christian God. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, just rejected that when I turned 18 and, you know, he wasn't doing what I thought he should for me. So I was like, I'm, I'll just go do it on my own and right. do it my way. Yeah. Do it my way. What was the, what was the idea that you had about God when you rejected that whole ideology? Um, I always just felt like he was so distant and very angry, like, Wow. Distant, so, angry, like didn't approve yeah. of you or? No, I wasn't good enough. You know, if I was, if I could just be better, do better, then he would pay attention and, and help me. And, but I also wasn't willing to help myself at the time either. So. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, you felt like God didn't help you. Mm-hmm. Is that right? 
Yeah. Okay. I remember I remember laying on my floor crying and just shaking my fist and I was just like, where are you? Like why why am I like this? Why do I keep doing this to myself? And just yeah, oh. that was that was the moment that I really was just like, I'm done. I can't, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And so I yeah, turned away for a long time. Interesting. You know, I had a similar experience. Um, you know, why am I like this? Like wanting to be different and asking mm-hmm. God to fix me and then and then he didn't. I felt like he didn't. Yeah. And uh I had a I had a very similar experience with like, all right, God, fuck you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um yeah. But yeah, okay, so that's interesting. So you you gave up. Yeah, I had a similar experience. So fast forward, um, you know, to to now. I mean, did you have like I hear a lot about people who have that experience where like they kind of hit bottom and they're like, um, you know, God help me. Did you have that that moment? Um, not that stands out. Like I for me steps two and three like have really been just a a disassembling and then a reassembling Mm -hmm. um you know kind of coming up with something that works for me like I've always I would say been spiritual like I've always wanted to believe there was something more Mm -hmm. and um but I just wasn't sure what that was gonna look like and I guess that's kind of why these steps you know they help us figure start to figure that out yeah and and reconnect with whatever that is for us right like put all the uh, religious dogma aside, yes. like whatever it is that doesn't fit or makes sense. Yeah. Like for me, like God needed to make sense. Mm-hmm. And I, I was taught that, you know, our feeble, tiny human minds couldn't fathom the vastness of God's love. And then I was just like this, um, you know, wretched human. And um, I was like, well, then why did he make me this way? Yep. <laughs> it just, you know, it just never made any sense to me. Um Okay. Well, this is good. Um, thank you for sharing that part. It's always interesting Mm -hmm. to hear like, you know, where, where did we start and how did we get here, you know, in terms of, you know, trying to comprehend, you know, a higher power, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, um, the homework assignment was read big book, chapter five, how it works, pages 58 through 63. And, um, you know, the first question is look up control in a dictionary list two to five techniques that you use to control people, places, and things. Uh, but first I'm just curious, I know it's been kind of a process, but do you recall like some of the thoughts or is there anything stand out to you in the reading in the big book that you can recall? I don't have anything written down per se, but those are kind of the meat and potato chapters of how it works. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I remember reading it, you know, and it was kind of interesting for me to just be like, I just related so much, not necessarily Mm -hmm. to the specifics, but to the feelings. Yes, me too. Yeah. The feelings of powerlessness and how I tried to control, you know, manage my Mm -hmm. feelings and control my drinking and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, I related to the hopelessness of not being able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then that was the first chapter that I've ever read. I remember in treatment was the first time I think I heard the chapter where it talks about how being nice can be a way to control others. Because <laughs> that was my number one go to. And I'm like, I thought I was just being a nice person. And all of a sudden, they're telling me, well, you're being nice, but you're doing it because you're trying to control the situation and manipulate people to do what you want. Interesting. And I was like, I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't even know I was doing that. No. Yeah, that's so, the uh, fundamentals yeah. of denial. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh, yeah, I mean, those revelations are just so, like, when they, when they, you finally see something you couldn't see before, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so was that one of the control techniques or that you used was being nice? It was, yeah. That was my, that's probably the top of the list. Um, but as I thought about it and I kind of went away from this question for a while and had to think about it. Cause I'm like, I'm not a controlling person. That's what I was, you know, thinking inside my head. Yeah. But then as I started to think about it, I was like, um, there have been times in, in my addiction where like I've been, I've played helpless. Um, oh. you know, I'm the, I'm the victim. I, I don't know how to do this or I can't, I'm too overwhelmed. 
um, poor me type of thing. Right. Um, self pity. Yeah. And I don't do that a lot. Like I'm, a, I've always prided myself on being a fairly independent person. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of admitting that one is, was hard <laughs> to do yeah. that, you know, that I do do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, but then there's anger and jealousy that can come out sometimes. Um, and sometimes I can play the martyr role too. You know, like I, I do all these nice things for you and uh, I don't get anything back. Martyr. <laughs> yeah. Those are really power. I, I hate to say it, but those are such powerful um, positions. Uh, I mean, they say that the sickest one in the relationship is the one who controls it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, somebody who's, I don't know, I, I, I've been around people like anger is anger is I, I definitely relate to the anger. It's like I use anger to um, control others at times. Like mm-hmm. that can be a manipulation. Um, but yeah, the victim, man, that's a um, that's a really powerful position to mm-hmm. say that I'm because what it does is the people who love you that are around you. It's like when you say, I'm the victim, I can't do any of this. They are, they, it's difficult to watch you suffer. So they mm-hmm. jump in to do things for you that you could probably do yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's good that you can mm-hmm. see that. That's amazing. Yeah, I took a little bit of writing and, and thinking <laughs> on it and, and just letting it, you know, and even praying yeah, right. about it and, and then all of a sudden it was like wow like I just I've never seen that like that or admitted to myself even that I was playing helpless that I you know <sighs> that I would do I would do it by like just oh I'm so overwhelmed and I just I'm I have depression and I have addiction and I have all these things that make me sick and I so I can't mm-hmm. go to work I, I can't. can't yeah depression using depression yeah. as a um, reason to not take responsibility mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think there's a question number three it says explain what you would imagine would happen if you were unable to control it um and i I said they would expect more from me that's that's part of why i do it Mm. that makes sense yeah um a little bit of fear there too probably just because i'm i'm scared of succeeding too right like i've never been sober for an extended length of time Uh it's 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 kind of scary you know that unknown is exciting but it's also (laughs) unknown. <laughs> That's interesting that you use those two words because I have often found that like words, words are really powerful and you know, they are connected to feelings in my mind. It's like certain words provoke certain feelings and a slight adjustment between, um, scared and excited because they do feel similar. Yeah. Scared and excited feel similar. Um, and when I choose different words, my reality changes too. It's kind of trippy. So I like that you used excited rather than scared. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, but back to the question. So did you look up control in the dictionary? I did. Yes. What did Um, did the the definition say? Um, the power to influence and direct people's behavior or the course of events. Mm. Um, Okay. That was the one I liked the best because that's kind of what it what we're talking about, right? It's like, the course of events. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trying to change other people's behavior. and Yeah. yeah. Um, it says the power to restrain something like our emotions or actions. Oh. And then to have authority, authority over. Mm-hmm. Right. Those are good. Yeah. Okay. And then you listed the example. Example. Oh, do you do you li- do you have examples, specific examples of these control methods? Like, did you have something? Okay, so you mentioned depression. What about anger? Do you have a? Um, can you think of a scenario uh-huh. where you used anger to I didn't, control someone? I didn't write anger down, but I wrote down jealousy because that's something okay. I'm, I'm I struggle quite a bit with, and so that comes out. You know, I, I, usually with my partner, I'm uh-huh. acting possessive or cold. I I go I, I kind of become indifferent almost rude to him and my feeling underneath that or thoughts are that if I don't protect what's mine I'll lose it mm-hmm. um you know and I'm worried that the other person is putting out feelers and if I'm not there to come between them he'll respond right there's no there's I'm not trusting it's that jealousy that's overriding everything um and what are what do you mean by the um putting out feelers that you have to be in between that what does that mean? Um, 
Are you concerned that he's like too friendly with people on social media or in person at work? A little bit of both, I guess. And yeah, a bit of everything. Um, But again, it's, it's my insecurity and my wanting to control the situation and my fear of being abandoned or left. Okay. Do you have abandonment issues from your past? Like from your parents? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much from my parents, but uh, from my first partner, my first marriage. Okay. Yeah. Um, he in your first marriage, he asked for a divorce. Yes, and he cheated several times, and it was the first time. Like the first time is pretty traumatic. <laughs> oh yeah. So That's awful! I, Such a betrayal. Yeah. Broken trust. So then, so then to control you know, my fear, I, I use jealousy as a way to control other people around me, my partner, my kids or, you know. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. That's brave of you to admit that. Thank you for, it's hard. Sure. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a but, terrible you know, feeling, right? But I don't like how it feels. And yeah. And it's, it's something that I want to change and, and, and I guess understanding where it comes from and then being able to let it go. You know, I, I kind of had an, uh, an actual situation where, the girl that w- that I thought was flirting with him was actually a friend of mine now. Oh, really? <laughs> she had no intention. She she just was a friend. Like, it was, yeah. So I felt really silly afterwards, but it was a good example of, like, look at the situation, you know, from a different perspective. Like, mm-hmm. she could be a possible new friend. Like, why, why do you feel like she's a threat? Right, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's, uh, and you know what? That is so common. And Mm -hmm. I think so many people have such shame around jealousy, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's like rooted in shame. It's like, it's like we have it and then we're embarrassed by it because it's, um, it's almost a direct admittant, um, admittance. That's not a word. Is it, uh, like admitting directly that I feel less than, Mm -hmm. right? It's like an admission that I feel less than, and that's, I guess that's embarrassing. And, you know, the difference between shame and, you know, other feelings is, you know, shame is that not that I did something wrong, but that I am wrong. Right. It's like I'm broken in some way. Right. And it's, um, a terrible feeling. It's a feeling of hopelessness. So to be wrestling with that, I mean, yeah, no wonder, (laughs) like no wonder we drink for heaven's sakes. (laughs) <laughs> or but whatever. again like je- even jealousy it is an emotion and it does tell us something right like it, it can yeah. be a real like with my first marriage like there was a real reason for me to be jealous and and to feel that feeling because my partner was being taken away right like he was leaving yeah and that's interesting so did you were you disconnected from him that you didn't know it was happening or um, we lived apart for a little bit because um, he worked in another town mm-hmm. and so he would come home on weekends or during the week and vice versa, whatever his shift was. And uh, people would tell me what was happening and I would find you know phone numbers and different things like oh. that. And I even walked in once um, oh and there were God. shoes there that weren't mine at the door. And uh, so you know, like, yeah, there was lots of reason, but I was just in such denial that I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to believe it. See it. I didn't yeah. want to have to to leave. You know, I had two young children and. Oh my goodness. Yeah. On some level, did you know? Yes. They say that I, I hear that, that afterwards it's like I was in denial, but on some level I knew the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. That is so yeah. painful. Um, Okay, well, listen, it makes sense why you have abandonment issues and that it's carrying over into your uh, current relationship. And, you know, I always, forgive me if I'm redundant, but there's that saying that time heals all wounds, and that's such a lie. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. We just bury it, and then it leaks out. We detach from it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. And then Mm -hmm. it comes out sideways, you know, it comes out in the present moment in all these weird little ways. And we're like, Mm -hmm. where is this coming from? It's like, because we're so detached from it. It's like, we don't see it. So we're like, it can't be there. I don't see it. But then it affects all your relationships. So, um, okay, this is really good because we'll be able Mm -hmm. to, because now that you're acknowledging it, 
then you can give it some space, you can feel it, you can process it to resolution. And that's the whole point of doing these steps is kind of unpack all this stuff and identify, you know, what's really going on, how it's affecting us. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, we can talk about different ways of resolving this. So this is really good. So thank you so much mm-hmm. for sharing these such painful things. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, this is really good. Okay. So let's see, those were your examples. And then, um, step three, explain what you imagine would happen in, in each of these examples, if you were unable to control it. And I know we we're kind of all over the place, but, um, did you write something down that you want to share or we can just kind of talk it through whatever is easier for you? Yeah, we can just talk it through, I guess. Okay. Um, um, so we talked about using, um, let's for instance, depression's like a real thing, right? Like people have depression mm-hmm. and, and often it's debilitating. And, but you have found, you know, like when you get really honest with yourself that there were times when you used it to avoid re- responsibility, right? Yes. Okay. Is that fair? All right. So, I mean, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but, um, so if you can think of a situation where you used it, um, to avoid responsibility, um, let's see, what would you imagine would happen if you were unable to control that situation? Was it like, avoiding responsibility at work or in a relationship? Mm -hmm. Is it tied to money or it's probably mostly tied to my job. Um, a little bit with my kids too. Like I know when my drinking got really bad and I was going off to treatment, um, my mom spent a lot of time helping out with my kids, like living here in, in our place with them. And, uh, and sometimes I think I, I went away just for a vacation. Like I just, I, I just so overwhelmed with everything. I just needed a break. But when I came home, I, I wasn't always ready to go back, back to work right away when I probably could have. Mm-hmm. I just was scared. To, I was embarrassed. Um, mm, yeah. Cause I didn't leave on good terms and, uh, how else does it play out? Um, so if you couldn't use, if you didn't use that as a, way to control the situation you would have had to um you know be be more of a responsible parent or you know go back to work and and face the humiliation at work or Mm -hmm. you know and I gotta say that's the reason that we use these things as coping skills is because we don't have like a healthy coping skill right like if, if you didn't have a lot of support to like face your shame around work. It's like, that's tough to face to begin with. It's like, well, no wonder that's what you used. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, there are other ways, but if you don't have those other coping skills. Yeah. Um, and then at first I didn't have those. Like now, you know, I think step or question four here kind of asks like how you would handle it. Um, by not trying to control it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what um, would you have done differently in that situation where it's like, um, (laughs) excuse me, used depression to avoid work? What would you have done instead? Like just go to work and apologize or face some music or what would you have done? Um, I would have been, yeah, better communicating with work about when I was ready to come back and what I was able to take on instead of just going back and going, I can do everything or I can't do anything. Like there was no all or in between. Mm-hmm. Yes, all or nothing all the time. Yeah. And, okay. Um, yeah. So maybe being so. like clear about what your boundaries are, asking for what you need. Yeah. Like being, on, you know, honest. Being being honest and that's, you know, asking because I wasn't asking for help until it became a crisis. And then okay. everybody's kind of surprised because they're like, well, we thought you were okay because on the outside it looked like you were. But. Yeah, that outside can be very deceiving, though. Yeah. Okay, so honesty, asking for help, um, boundaries. Uh, yeah, boundaries I had written down here, too, actually. Oh, did you? Um, yeah. I did, yeah. Clear and healthy boundaries of what I will do. Yeah. And, uh, and I also said step into my ability with confidence. Like, I'm really good at my job. And <laughs> that's, it, I feel silly saying that, but Hi. I've always worked work has been a good a place where I've gotten a lot of my confidence from when, yeah. when home wasn't so great. Cause I was mm. struggling with my addiction. 
Sure. And um, yeah, so, but I mean, I, I look at different areas of my life and I've kind of been holding myself back, I think, from what I'm able to do. Like my boss at work in my last review was talking about training me for management. And I was like, mm. that's like a big dream. That's like a, you know, that's like way over there. I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet. Mm. But to hear her say that and go, yeah, you know what? My, like my skill set is, I, I could do that, but I, I'd have to work at it. And, and there's more chance of failing when you're, you know, stepping up to the plate and, and you're in the spotlight. So that's scary. That is scary. That is scary. It's so interesting. I feel like people that struggle with addiction and alcoholism, things like that, have such intense energy that like we need boundaries because it does channel, like it literally creates a channel for our energy. And um, when we're on point, I mean, we, we're very productive and like, Mm -hmm. we're like amazing people. (laughs) We're capable of amazing things. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because, you know, we fall, uh, just like everybody else does, but we are so hard on ourselves when we do fall. Um, we forget. Yeah. Yeah. So it does not surprise me actually that, you know, you're performing well at work and your boss wants to promote you. Um, so that's very, did, did that feel validating for you to hear that from your boss? It was, you know what? It was really good because I mean, I, I was off work for two years and then came back and I've been there now like for a year and uh so I'm just now back up to a full workload and you know feeling like I kind of know the job again and right just better all around and now that my head is clear again and I'm not using so yeah it's just yeah amazing what can happen when our (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) brain is not under the influence (laughs) yeah um that's amazing okay that's very cool let's see um what else Um, what about jealousy? Like what, since that is a control, um, mechanism, I guess we could say, what would be an alternative way to handle a situation where you would normally use jealousy? Um, a sense of humor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. My my boyfriend and I have actually started, um, not not recently, but there was a time where we were actually, you know, because we both struggle with this and we've been very open with each other about it. And we've discovered that it's kind of funny, like to just say out loud what that thought was in your head, like, you know, oh, oh he was looking at, at your butt, like when we walked by him in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, awesome. you know, we can, we can say it out loud and it's like, just whatever. It, it just feels like it's not as serious and not as... Um, yeah, not a serious. Yeah, it takes the power out of it, right? Like it that does. fear by just saying that thought out loud that, you know, oh my God, like I just, I washed your shirts with my pink skirt and, uh, you know, I'm really sorry, but. <laughs> um, no, that's good. Like using humor, uh, but, you know, underlying that humor is honesty. Yes. Like being willing, it's, it's um, it is sort of hiding your vulnerability and under the guise of uh, humor, but it's still the truth, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and to just be able to laugh about it, you know, yeah. it's like yeah, our- he's not going to leave me because I turned his white shirts pink, you know, like it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or fucking up no. his laundry, yeah, that's that's right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to make him look bad, yeah. Um, okay, that's awesome. Honesty yeah. and humor and vulnerability. Those are all mm-hmm. um, very appropriate, um, you know, communication tools instead of jealousy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause yeah, communication really... is big for that. to so build a trust, you know, and just keep that openness there. Yeah. Very good. Uh, what else did I write down? Um, and you were, Oh, what about being a martyr? What would you do instead? That one, of... I didn't have any other answers. I hadn't really worked through that one yet. But okay, so martyr, you know, that's another way you used the original um, term uh, being nice. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, not that you're going to be rude, no. but 
um, I feel like being nice, overly nice or being a martyr, you know, I did, I did all this, all these things for you, you know, where's mine <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, what, what would you say that you could do differently in those kinds of scenarios? Um, I think boundaries are, are really big with this one, you know, having, being really consistent mm -hmm. and uh, unclear on what they are and communicating that to others, you know, so that I'm not just being walked on all the time or saying yes to things I don't want to do and will feel uh -huh. resentful for later. Okay. Um, not so it's saying learning yes. how to say no. Okay. <laughs> learning. How, okay. Saying no. Yeah. And which I feel is like another level of honesty. Yes. That's it. Saying no when you mean no. Um, yeah. That whole people pleaser thing, you know, I, th I feel like yeah. is rooted in um, dishonesty. Yeah. And we, and I don't mean to be harsh about that. I feel that that comes from a place of um, lack of self-worth, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to condemn somebody who is displaying behavior that demonstrates to me that they don't feel worthy on some level. Like that makes me sad. Like I have mm -hmm. empathy for that. It's like, oh, how could you not feel like you were worthy of, you know, saying no, right? Mm -hmm. Like we should be able to say no. Um, otherwise it's not a request. It's a demand. And, you know, it's, um, in relationships, we, we don't make demands of each other. We make requests. Right. So, um, but I like that idea of the boundaries, you know, and you mentioned consistency. That's really important too. Um, <clears throat> the funny thing about boundaries is especially if you're somebody who's like, dedicated to personal development or personal growth. Um, sometimes boundaries can be like a moving target because we evolve and we change. Mm -hmm. And what I was okay with yesterday may not be okay with today. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understand that. Um, and, and I feel like that requires being really present with myself, mm -hmm. like checking in with myself to before I respond with a yes or a no. Yeah. That's really yeah, important. Really, and really look at my intentions behind that being Ooh. nice, you know. I'm, what are my motives? Yeah, that's huge. What are my motives? Yeah. What are my? So if I'm just being nice, I mean, that, and that's the that's the real control part, right? Like if I'm just being nice to get you to do something for me, well, then I'm not really being nice. <laughs> Genius. No, that is it right there. That's that's mm -hmm. it. It's what are my motives? Yeah. That's a great question. You know, and it's you know taking that pause too instead of your knee-jerk response to be like yes or no it's like you know what can I get back to you yeah. <laughs> can I get back to you tomorrow I need to sleep on this so that you can check your motives yeah. um I'm so glad that came out that was brilliant mm -hmm. um okay well that's all I can think of because that kind of covered mm -hmm. all the like the anger jealousy martyrdom depression abandonment um so these are really good. You mentioned really good coping, healthy coping skills is what we're trying to identify. So that's awesome. Uh, and you mentioned asking for help and I would, you know, because we're on step three, you know, asking God for help, you know, mm -hmm. helping us to decide things and which can be kind of tricky because it's like, how do you know what God's will is? And, um, my experience and I wonder if it's your experience too, but my experience is that when it's peaceful, like when I feel peaceful, mm -hmm. that's probably the way to go. Yeah. Right. Is that your experience? It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I try not to make a decision until I have that, you know, head and heart kind of lined up and everything feels like it's, yeah. That's I guess. Good. Yeah. When in doubt, yeah. don't. Yeah. Very good. Um, well, uh, number five was, or is what's the difference between submission and surrender? What do you have for those? Um, when I looked in the dictionary, like they're actually pretty close, I know, right? <laughs> right. So, but what I kind of took away from it, like submission is the act of, or the action of accepting or yielding, like bowing to an authority or will of another and surrender was to abandon oneself or to give up or give in. But I didn't really like that one. <laughs> but, oh, really? Because submission always seemed to be more negative to me than surrender. Really? Okay. 
I think. I don't know. I have, I I had a quote actually, I found that I had written in my big book. Um, Can I share it with you? Please. Yeah. yeah. It says acceptance is not submission. It's the acknowledgement of the facts of a situation, then deciding what you're going to do about it. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Cause I had a really hard time with the word submission. Cause I felt like I was doing it against my will, whereas surrender, I was willingly waving the white flag and going. I oh, give in. yeah. That, that's how I looked at it, but. Okay. Submission was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense. Um, I think I had it switched in my mind, which is why I probably sounded surprised. Um, okay. So submission was like, you mentioned bowing to authority and I don't, yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Whereas surrender is a choice. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm choosing like to give it up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the submission is being forced like from an external yeah. source. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And I love that. I love that um, saying about acceptance. It's acknowledging reality. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing about that is that uh, when I'm emotional about something, I can't yes. see, uh, like my perspective is clouded by emotion. I can't yes. see things clearly, which is why I need somebody else. This is why we need each other, right? It's like I need somebody mm-hmm. else who is unemotional, who can see things clearly that can give me like, a better perspective that's closer to reality than what I have going on. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. And let's see, number six was give an example of a situation where you felt your behavior had been submissive. Um, I wasn't really sure on the answer for this one, but I wrote down, I said, um, an example would be like not planning something and just letting it happen. Like just let it just happen. Mm. but I don't know if that's um I mean if that's what I guess I that I guess know. I was thinking of the submission like where somebody wants me to do something that I don't want to do and then you know I'm doing it just to please them or to make them happy or yeah 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 and the, and the dangerous part about being submissive is um that's like saying yes when I mean no which creates resentment And as I have resentment, um, it comes out sideways, right? And I become passive aggressive. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so submissive is not, you know, it's like saying yes when you mean no. Yeah. Yeah, that's a terrible feeling too. It is, yeah. And um, let's see, seven was how could you have handled the situation by surrendering instead? That's kind of tricky. Yeah. Um, Well, what I was doing wasn't working. So then that's when I I said I need to ask for help. Oh, okay. So if you say yes and you find yourself in over your head, then you ask for help. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, right? Like, listen, we make mistakes all the time, right? Like maybe we say yes to something we really should have said no. And then so you can you know, surrender to the truth or reality and just be like, you know what? Uh, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said yes to this. You know, we can always, there's always a way to sort of clean it up or make it right. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually really good. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see number eight, how do you honor and nurture your higher power? If you haven't begun doing this yet, how can you get started? So honor and nurture your higher power. Uh, and that really, to me, kind of, you know, we're on step three about turning your life and your will over the care of God. Um, so if you're, this kind of, to me, speaks to a, um, nurturing a, a, what do they call it? A conscious contact with God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a practice for trying to stay connected or? I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? I'm, yeah. Yes. But I'm. You know, for me, it's, it's, it includes my gratitude practice, mm-hmm. um, which yes, I, mean, I, I love do, seeing I, those by the yeah, way, in the women's group, it's, it makes such a difference in my mindset throughout the day yeah. that I've actually caught myself now in a moment of stress where I was like, what's, what's good right now? Like, what's good that I can hang on to? That's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like my mind's just automatically going there. Isn't that and, amazing? 
that I'm like, this is why I, you know, this is why we do this. Right. This like it's, we do it. yeah. Cause it actually yeah. works. Yeah. It works. It works yeah. in the so moment. Yeah. I'm trying to set aside some daily quiet time. Um, I don't always get it in the morning, but at work, mm-hmm. sometimes I can grab a 20 minute break sure. by yeah. myself. It's nobody bugs me there. So, yeah. um, then I take that time and I, well, I'll do some of my daily readings and uh, a little prayer in my head or do some journaling. So I like writing prayers out sometimes too. Oh, I like that. Like a letter, like a letter. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I remember being at work and just like going out to my car sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, um, just to get that. Yeah. It's like literally a little bit of space, like protected mm-hmm. space around me. Yeah. Like nobody talked to me. Yeah. Um, I also like going outside. Oh um, yeah. For like a, like a meditative walk type of thing. Like I love just being outside and on a sunny day and just feeling that warm sun on my face. And that, that's when I really connect mm. like to my source and I just, I can feel it when I'm outside and I walk barefoot on the grass. Oh, that's it. Like out in nature. Just, yeah. Just to feel the ground under my feet and really ground myself. Yeah. Yeah. Grow where you're planted. I love that. Yeah. That's really good. Um, so number nine, what is the difference between destructive selfishness and healthy selfishness? I would actually like to rewrite this question um, and turn it into more, I mean, because selfishness feels destructive, but I really, I really feel like it's, what is the difference between selfishness and self-care? I, I think that would be mm-hmm. a better question. Um, but what did you have for that one? Well, I said destructive selfishness was not caring how my behavior affected others, you know, um, whether that was anything from driving drunk with the kids mm-hmm. in the car, mm-hmm. um, because I just needed to go to the liquor market and get more, right. you know, before the long weekend and the store was closed. Mm-hmm. Um, though that's to me, that that's the destructive part. Yeah, um, yeah. The healthy selfishness is, is I actually wrote down self care and yeah. uh, and boundaries. Ooh, that's a good one. Self care and boundaries. Um, yeah, I mean we got to put the mask on first, right? Yeah. If we're if we're compromised, we can't really help anybody else. Mm-hmm. I like that. Very good. Um, so number eleven. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. 10, name a few instances of, okay, you just did that. Uh, I did, sorry. yeah. And I yeah, actually sorry. wrote down, yeah, when I had to pick up kids. Yeah. Um, list three ways you can improve your own sense of self by practicing, I'm going to say self-care. Self-care. <laughs> okay. My number one was better boundaries. And okay. I reminded myself that it's okay to say no. Okay. I feel um, like, yeah, I feel like I, I'm, I'm, uh, sensing a reoccurring thing yeah. here. So <laughs> boundaries, you mentioned gratitude list, you mentioned journaling, meditation. Yeah, I said, stick with the winners, build community Ooh. and connect. Build community. Mm-hmm. Connection. Yeah. I mean, yeah. connection is a cure. I know you've heard that. Well, you get so before. disconnected. Like when I was, I've been, now that I'm coming out of my whole like, like I'm calling the last year and a half the whole I'm coming out and all my recovery friends and stuff like they're still all there but I I stopped reaching out to everybody yes. right I started yeah. hiding because I didn't want anybody to know and and now that I'm starting to branch out again and reach out they're showing up in in droves it's always kind of cool actually Amazing. that they're all that. and they were there the whole time right they just I just I was the one hiding Not yeah <laughs> you retreated that's understandable yep. Yeah. So, and then my last one was meditate and move. Meditate and move. I love it. Okay. Meditate and move. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. So nobody ever wants meditation to be the answer, right? Like no. that's a boring prayer, meditation, journaling, really. That is those, those things are the answer. They're, and they're subtle, right? But so profound. They have profound effects and they're not easily identified viable like to ourselves but you know given a little bit of time it's like our family notices it first and then other people start to notice it's kind of like weight loss it's like (laughs) you lose that 10 pounds and people start to notice um but um okay those are amazing things 
Um, so try to do one of these things each day in the upcoming week and note them here or in your journal. So this had a five days. And listen, I see your posts on the um, ODAT chat, private women's group. So I love seeing that. But do you want to just kind of describe some of the things that um, that I did there? Yeah. Um, day one was actually a root canal. <laughs> but it was, but I know it doesn't seem like self-care, but when I was in active addiction, I put off going to the doctor, going to the dentist wow. and taking care of myself. I would have just drank the pain away, like just numbed it. Sure. Um, but this time I, because I was, I'm clean and sober. I called the dentist right away when I, when I, I like noticed my tooth was hurting and they fixed it the next day and it was, you know, done and gone, right? Like right wow. away instead of weeks of pain and suffering. So I was yeah. really proud of myself because I'm really scared of the dentist and mm. it was, yeah, yeah. A big deal. That's a big one. That's good. Yeah. So it was kind of funny, but the other ones were just like, I, um, I'm meditating five minutes every day for the mm-hmm. last week. So Very good. I'm starting that. Nice. Um, uh, I've been trying to walk more on my breaks and stuff at work too, just cause I have a sitting job. Yeah. Um, meetings that's big time self-care, whether it's online or in person, I'm trying to, right. you know, do both. Sure. Yeah. In person and then, important. and rest now, like I have this head cold right now. So I've been having to take, you know, naps after work, which I don't usually do, <laughs> but, uh, right now it's needed, you know, so right. you're going to yeah. let your body heal. Yeah. Those are really good. I have a hard time sometimes because usually my sicknesses were self-induced and <laughs> right. when I get really sick, I have a hard time letting myself like, it's okay to have a nap. You know, if you're tired to go rest, you, you worked all day, go have a nap. It's okay. No one's going to starve, you know, supper will be ready when you're, when you're right. ready to do it. So. That's interesting. Cause that's almost like conditioning, right? It's like the negative conditioning. It's like the associating, um, resting and laying down and things like that with, um, hangovers. Mm-hmm. So it's, you, you know, there's, there, there's that resistance to, not wanting to do those things because it yeah. is tied to the feeling of, you know, shame or guilt or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's important that you overcome that to take care of your body for sure. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. So the next one was at the end of each day, write down how you felt both physically and emotionally after doing these self healing acts. What do you have for that one? More connected. You feel more connected? Not, not, not so alone. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm, it's like by doing these little, like even just doing the gratitude list daily and then now the meditation and then working on these steps, it's like, I'm keeping all these little promises to myself and I'm showing Mm -hmm. up and I'm starting to be like, I can trust myself. Like I can trust Rosalind, you know, she, she does what she says she's going to do. And it's like, yeah, it's such a neat, and it's kind of the next question or answer, but. (laughs) Oh, it says at the end of the week, reflect on these actions and might have affected your spiritual growth. What has changed for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's um, yeah. I mean, listen, all, all these things are, you know, baby steps towards healing your self esteem and, um, making you stronger and stronger every day. So, I mean, um, I know you, you said you didn't feel good, but you look, I, I mean, your energy just seems totally different. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been, I'll have a month soon. And I'm, just like, I'm so excited, Arlena. It's Yay. taking me so long to get here, but it, whatever, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, yeah. I'm here now and I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I mean, it's not an easy thing, right? It's, you yeah. know, the, the resistance of surrendering and, you know, sometimes we have to get beat down to, you know, really surrender and, and start taking action, um, you know, recommended action. It's just, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like we, we fight with ourselves more than anyone else. Right. And it's hard. It's hard admitting some of those things about yourself, you know, like whether it's, I don't want to do the work or, you know, like, (laughs) yeah. Sometimes it's like a pray to, um, pray for the willingness, right? Be willing yeah. to be willing. Sometimes you just got to start somewhere, but, um, yeah, no, really good work today. This is really good. And, um, I would typically, if you were, if we were doing this face to face, I would, um, ask that we hold hands and 
kneel and say the third step prayer. Do you know the third step mm-hmm. prayer by heart? Not by heart. Maybe if you started me off, but <laughs> I, uh, um, I, have I haven't worked. Lot. Like, um, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Does that sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've said it once actually on my knees. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the third step prayer, you know, doing step three is really, you know, it's saying out loud, you know, I'm going to turn my will and my life over the care of God, you know, so I'll let you, you can don't, you don't have to read the prayer if you don't want to, you can use your own words. Um, either way, do you want to grab the book and read it out of the book or do you want to just say your own words or what would you like to do? I'll read it from the book. Okay. I'll yeah. let you lead the prayer then. Okay. Do you know what page it's on? I do. Hang on. It's uh no, I have to go find grab it. Hang on. <laughs> it's okay. You would think after all this time. Okay. Um there we go, I found it. Yay. Page sixty-three. It's on page six. Yes. Should I read it outside here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help, of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Amen. Yay. Thank you. All right. Well, you said it in front of the whole world. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Just kidding. Just just me and you. (laughs) That's how I try and think about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, listen, you really did, you really dug deep and I am just so, um, it's always such an honor to witness, um, somebody's progress and just your vulnerability and your willingness to, um, you know, acknowledge things that are really hard to admit. Right. And, uh, I'm just so in awe of you. And and I just want to say thank you for being willing to, to go through the process and do it on the podcast and, and just know Mm -hmm. that, um, all your hard work is not only just inspiring, but you know, it gives people a window into what can happen for them too. It's like, Mm -hmm. we all want to be the best that we can be. And, you know, it's like they say that if you work the steps, the steps will work you. And, you Mm -hmm. know, it seems to be the case in your process, you know, just, um, you know, just watching, watching you go through and, and uh, kind of melts the walls a little bit. So the yeah. walls of denial. Mm-hmm. Well, and my hope to somebody, you know, listening that hasn't done the steps yet, maybe it'll help them realize that it's not such a scary process, right? Like yeah. if I, I know if I'd had somebody to like, if I had someone to listen to kind of go through it, I'd be like, Oh, okay. That's not so bad. It's I mean, so yeah, you bad. have to admit, a, you know, a few hard things, but that's okay. It's all, it's yeah. all for the good in the end. It is. Everything's okay. Like in the end, it'll be okay. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Well, listen, thank you so much. Um, if I haven't sent you step four, I will. (laughs) I'll wait for it. (laughs) Okay. Well, listen, sweetheart, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing you in the private women's group. Definitely. All right, you have a great night. Thank you so much. You too. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed the podcast today, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher and leave a review. And if you'd like to make a donation to the podcast and help me keep the lights on, you can do so by visiting odatchat.com. There's a donation button or membership button on the right hand side. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us.